Hey, 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 what's going on, Cloud Scholars? I hope everyone out there is having a grand day. My name is Kieran Tross, and I'm here with another video. Um, what we are working on today is uh, part three, and this is uh, sending data to your workspace using data collection rules. So um, just to catch you up to speed, there's a part one and part two. Part one, I went into what is uh, Azure Log Analytics Workspaces and showed you how to create one. In part two, I was showing you how to send data to your log analytics workspace, but doing it from a manual process using Azure resources, such as a public IP address, and then also doing it through Azure policies. Now, what we're gonna do is show you how to use uh, data collection rules for your virtual machines, your Windows and your Linux machines. So if we come over here to our Scholars workplace, uh, we're gonna take a look at our tables really quickly. And this is the look of our tables at the moment. Uh, so what I wanna do is I also wanna take a look at our agents. And what right now you can see for Windows, we have zero Windows computers connected. And then for Linux, it's the same thing. I'm gonna go over to Azure Monitor because that's where the data collection rules work. And if we're using our data collection rules, we'll have to go in here to, to start enabling them. So if I come over here and I go to virtual machines uh, for Azure Monitor, I can go to overview and I can see that we have zero being monitored and two that are, are not monitored at the moment. So what I wanna to talk to you about is, you know, if you don't really know about Azure Monitor, uh, Azure Monitor, the way it works is, you know, uh, resources will be automatically provisioned within Azure Monitor. So you can have a storage account, Log Analytics, Workspace, et cetera, et cetera, they will all automatically show up, but that does not mean there's any data in there. So we need to worry about getting the data sent to the Log Analytics Workspace. And then also for virtual machines, they will show up, but they won't be monitored, right? So um, let's talk a little bit about data collection rules and how they work. So over here at the PowerPoint slide, and I'm, I'm not gonna PowerPoint you to death, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about it and then jump back to the Azure portal. So with our data collection rules, the way they work, you can have all your different virtual machines. So your VM1, VM2, VM3, and VM4 on the screen, and then you can associate them with different rules. So if you look at rule one, right? So this collect perf uh, counters, right? And that shows up in your log analytics workspace, that perf um, uh, name will show up as a table in your log analytics workspace. But what it does, it says send Microsoft perf to workspace A. So workspace A is getting information from virtual machine one, virtual machine two, uh, virtual machine three, and virtual machine four. So for rule number two though, it, see, it has it says, send Microsoft Windows events to workspace B. So now it's a different workspace that you're utilizing, but you're also getting information sent to that workspace. So it's saying, okay, association two, association two, uh, for virtual machines and so on and so forth. So with uh, data collection rules, it allows you to send logs to different workspaces. So you may have a team working in one workspace and you have another team working in another workspace. Um, they both need the data, but they're gonna use the data a little bit different for those uh, systems, right? Um, I, I do wanna talk about managing access to your log analytics workspace tables. Um, it is not in this part. Um, in the next part, part four, I will talk about managing access to your log analytics workspace tables. So let's talk a little bit about some scenarios. So uh, if you look at the screen right now, we have Azure Monitor Agent, right? So you configure data collection for Azure Monitor Agent. It says use the portal to create a data collection rule that specifies events and performance counters to collect from a machine with Azure Monitor Agent, then apply that rule to one or more of your virtual machines. So that's the manual process, and I'm gonna go through the manual process with you. Now, normally I tell people, I wanna show you how to do it the right way, um, so I, I normally do things like using Azure policies, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but I'm gonna go through the manual process with you because I want you to get an understanding of how this works, right? Um, so that's one of the reasons why I wanna do the manual process, but for uh, you know a, uh, a production environment, I probably would say don't do it this way, but it depends on you know the scope and what you're trying to do for uh, that specific policy. So over here, we're gonna say use Azure uh, policy to install Azure Monitor Agent and associate it with a data collection rule. So I'm gonna jump to the portal because I wanna show you exactly what policy they're referring to that you can use to set that up. Okay, back over at the Azure policies, uh, what you can see is I'm already in policies and I just put in deploy here just so I can filter out the results. 
And the policy that that uh, Microsoft document is talking about is deploy Windows Azure Monitor with user assigned managed identities, and then also deploy Linux um, uh, monitor agent, Azure Monitor agent with user managed identities as well. And these are built in initiatives. And you see right here it says built in and it says initiatives. And if you go through this whole thing, you can assign it. Uh, to your organization, right? And you can configure Windows virtual machines to run with it. Uh, and it's a bunch of different policies um, that work with that um, that uh, uh, policy initiative, right? That's what basically policy initiatives are a bunch of policies that are tied in together. So normally I would show you how to do it through Azure policy, uh, but to be completely honest with you, I, I wanna do it the manual process because it gets you a better understanding of how it works. Uh, in my previous video, I did show you how to do uh, wrap policies uh, with um, uh, the sending data from Azure resources and, and do a public IP address. And once you've done policies, you know, uh, four or five times, you kind of just understand how it works. And if you want to do like a deep dive in Azure policies, I do have another video talking about Azure policies and how that works. So um, let me just jump back over to the PowerPoint slide. So let's continue going through our scenarios. So the next one is custom logs. Uh, you can configure custom logs by using Azure portal to configure custom logs by using Azure resources uh, to manage templates and REST API. So you can send up, set up custom logs for uh, your data collection rules. You'll have to use a data collection endpoint with that. And I'll talk a little bit about that and show you exactly where that, where that, um, that resides in Azure. And then you have workspace transformation. So basically what the transformations are is it transforms your information. Just that's the simplest way to put it, right? So if you have information that's coming from a uh, uh, application, right? And that virtual machine is running some information that's like, you know, sensitive data and you have a team that needs to query it, you can say, all right, you know, some of this information is, you know, PII, personal information, and you don't want your team to be able to see this information. So what you can do is use transformations to now manipulate the data I shouldn't say manipulate, but transform or omit certain information so that this way your team is not able to be privy to seeing that stuff. So I hope that makes sense. So next we'll talk about working with data collection rules. So um, if you're working with data collection rules, there's different methods. You can use the API, CLI, or the, you can use PowerShell as well to work with uh, uh, data collection rules. And in order for you to use those different methods, you have to have certain roles and rights. So monitoring contributor, virtual machine contributor, um, and then right there, if you're doing any custom roles, you need to make sure that that specific action, that Microsoft that resource deployments um, is able to be in, is not able, but it has, uh, that is checked off for your custom role. Okay, so we're back over at the Azure uh, portal. And what I wanna show you is there's different ways of enabling the data collection role. So the first way of doing it is, you know, pretty simple way of doing it is to say, okay, you can come over to this not monitored and then you can click on enable, right? So this one's not running, so that's why it's not showing up that way. So I could click on enable and if I click on enable, right? And I click enable on this, it's now gonna bring me into, um, uh, some options to you know set it up and then where to send that information to. I don't want to go this route with this because what I want to do is I want to show you how to do it and set up a data collection rule and then enable it that way. This way is going to make us go through uh, and it's going to create a log analytics workspace for us. I want to force it to a specific log analytics workspace. So I'm going to come down here to data collection rules and I'm going to click create data collection rule. Over here, I need to give my data collection a name. I'm gonna say grab uh, Windows Info, which is fine. Uh, for the resource group, I'll just tie it to RGCUS, doesn't really matter. Uh, over here, the region does matter though. So the region has to be in the same area as your, data, is your log analytics workspace. So you need to make sure that this data collection rule is tied into that region. And then platform type, you have Windows, Linux, and you can have all. I'll just leave it as Windows. Uh, if you wanted to just do something, you could do all and then grab both. Uh, and this is what I was referring to earlier with the data collection endpoint. So with data collection endpoints, let me just hover over here. It says a data collection endpoint is optional for collecting Windows event logs, Linux syslogs, or performance counters. It is required for all other data sources. So if you have other data sources, let's say you have an application and the logs are in a directory that is um, specific or germane to that application, you will need a data collection endpoint because you need to now say, okay, this is where the logs are going to reside. So I'm gonna come over here and hit next. 
And then I'll say add resources. So what I'll do is I say, okay, which resources? I could go all resource groups, all that other stuff. And what I'll do is um, I wouldn't be specific. I'll just say the VM scholars and I'll click apply. And then right here you have this uh, create endpoint uh, that you can set up as well. Okay, so for collect and deliver, what we're gonna, what we have right now is this nasty message that's saying this data collection rule doesn't have any data sources or destinations selected. So when I click add data source, what I'll do is I'm gonna click down here and I'll just say, I can still do Windows events logs, I can say performance counters. I'll leave it the way it is. We can do customs if you wanna do customs if you want to. And what I'll do is for next or destination, I can just choose what I want. So this is Azure Monitor Metrics, or I could do Azure Monitor Logs. I'm gonna click on Logs, and then it's giving me a message saying workspace is required, and then this is where I force it to our Log Analytics workspace. So once I click over there for our Log Analytics workspace, what I'll do is add data source, and then now my nasty message is going right here. So what I'm doing after that is I'll just do a review and create, and then I'll click on Create. So now that I have my data collection rule that is created, what I'm gonna do next is I can go to my data sources and you'll see it says performance counters. I can add extra data sources if I needed to add extra data sources. I can do Windows events logs as well. I can now say, okay, I wanna do everything from, you know, I could do a custom or I could do basic and I could just add some more information if I wanted to do that. Just letting you know that you can always go back and you can add some more information if you want. And then I can say, Oh, let me go back there really quickly. I'm not even sure if it had the destination right. Let's see what it showed up. It said default. I don't want it here. I actually wanted to go to my scholars workspace. So that was good um, that I caught that. I didn't mean to click OK on that yet, but it's going to uh, scholars workspace. So now I can say that's where I want that to go. But I want you to realize for data sources, I can send this to different um, uh, workspaces, right? So if I wanted to do Windows event log, and I said, hey, you know, destination, I actually want this to go to a different workspace. I can change it and send it to another workspace if I wanted to do that. So now when it goes to resources now, so over here on resources, uh, we have our VM scholars that's showing up. If I click on add right now, and then I, I click over on this right here and I do VM scholars, I can click apply, right? And then once I click apply on this, so now what I want to do is I'm going to go over to my log analytics workspace, right? Um, and you have to give it some time, uh, to be completely honest with you, uh, for that data collection rule to go through, but it, it takes a matter of minutes. Uh, but, you know, obviously for the video, I'm just going to, you know, edit that time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my log analytics workspace. And what I want to do is I'm going to go to agents. Now, remember before it said uh, Windows agents, it had zero. Now it's saying one uh, via Azure Monitor Windows agent. And if I go to the tables, you can see how my table is now looking. You see the perf? That's what I was talking about earlier. That is the perf right there, performance. Um, and then you have your VM connection, VM compute. So we know information is 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 coming onto this uh, machine, uh, this log analytics workspace. And then it says, you see one Windows computer connected. And this, if we go to see them in logs, we're going to go and look at the heartbeat. So it says heartbeat where OS windows and it's saying uh, Azure monitor agent. And you see right here, it says our VM scholars. That is the one that we created. So we were able to successfully uh, set up our data collection rules and our VM is being is showing and you can look at the tables and see and that it shows up there as well. Now, um, as I said to you before, this is the manual process. I want you to kind of get an understanding of how this goes through and how this works, but I would normally do it differently. I would do it through Azure policy and now uh, you can have your Azure policy uh, tell you, you can force it to through your Azure policy to that log analytics workspace that you want it to go to. So that's probably the best way about going about doing it, but I just wanted to show you all the process if you do it through the manual way. So that wraps up this video. That is uh, using Azure uh, data collection rules so that this way you can send information to your log analytics workspace. I hope that the information I provided you was beneficial and help you out. Uh, if you were probably reading through Microsoft documentation, you know, banging your head against the desk, I hope that this video really helped you out. So I appreciate if you like and subscribe. I really do. I enjoy making these videos for you all. If you have, if you're not a cloud scholar yet, please uh, subscribe and become a cloud scholar. Uh, leave me your comments. Let me know exactly what you're thinking. If you like the con the content, and also if there is something else within the Azure ecosystem that you are looking to learn or you don't understand, I can. I'm more than happy to reach out. I have done that before and just you know just talked and chopped it up.
So as you all know, if you don't know, uh, the goal here is to get you from scholar to consultant and from consultant to expert. Thank you and see you next time.